Hi there. So welcome to the next lesson, Correction of Errors and Suspense Accounts. Now, if you realized in the double entry bookkeeping, we looked at how we determine or we prepare double entry or we enter uh, transactions in the various accounts of the company. And then you also realize that after that, we balanced the accounts and we extracted a trial balance and we saw that our trial balance balanced. But then there are at times when you prepare the uh, you extract the trial balance and the trial balance does not hold balance. Now, if the trial balance does not, uh, we extract it but it doesn't balance, meaning that the balancing or the remaining balance will be temporarily kept in a, an account called the suspense account, meaning that we are holding that amount in suspense for uh, waiting for further investigation to find out what really went wrong or the reason for the wrong figure or for that difference in the trial balance. There are other times also we could extract a trial balance. The trial balance has balanced, but we may have what, uh, undertaken some errors in the books of accounts which will affect our financial statement preparation. So what we want to look out for here is correction of errors and then suspense accounts. So we, there is going to be an error that the company has uh, uh, made or the bookkeeper has made and our duty here is to find out what went wrong and then what should have been done. Not only are we going to find out what went wrong and what should have been done, if the company has already prepared financial statement, meaning that if there are errors in the double entry or errors in the books that were used to prepare the financial statement, which brought us a profit or loss, meaning that profit or loss also has to be adjusted. So we're going to look out for and determine how we can correct various errors which went that occur in, in bookkeeping and also how we can adjust the net profit to actually reflect the profit that is supposed to reflect. So that is what we want to do here under correction of errors and suspense accounts. Now this is a very fundamental topic when it comes to the subject of financial accounting because if you don't know your double entry well then you're going to struggle here right but i believe that you have gone through the double entry you solve the questions that are there and you understand them very well because you should if there is an error then you should know what should have been so that when you know what should have been and then you see what has happened then you will know how to correct it but if you don't know what should have been, which is the double entry, then you may know what has happened, which is the error, but you wouldn't know what must be done, which is the correction of the error. So it is the three stages there. You should know what should have been, you should know what has been done, and you should know what we are supposed to do to correct the error. So that is what we want to consider here under correction of errors and then suspense accounts. Now, generally, errors that occur can be classified or categorized into two. There are errors that affect the agreement of the trial balance and then there are errors that also don't affect the agreement of the trial balance. What does that mean? It means that there are certain errors when they occur in the books, you will extract the trial balance and your trial balance will still balance. But there are errors in the, in the accounts. Then there are certain errors also that when they occur, it, it, it uh, these are the errors that will cause a difference in the trial balance and so the difference would have to be taken into a suspense account. So the idea here is that usually errors that don't affect the agreement of the trial balance, when we are correcting them, we don't involve suspense accounts. Now let me give you a scenario of that. Let's say for instance, bought goods on credit from bought goods on credit from Kwame for two hundred dollars. The entry was made in Kwame's account. Now, look at that again. Bought goods on credit from Kwame, $2,000. The, 
but the entry was made in Kwani's account. Now, this is an error that has occurred. But then, Kwame and Kwani are all our suppliers, meaning they are all in the sales ledger. Uh, they are all in the sales ledger of the company. Now, what should have been the double entry here? That's the first thing I asked you to note. So, what should have been the double entry? We should open Kwame's account and then certainly purchases account. Then we debit our purchases in the name of Kwame, 2000, and then we credit Kwame's account in the name of purchases, 2000. But this was not the case. Instead of putting the figure in Kwame's account, it was put in Kwame's account. So it wasn't Kwame, it was Kwame. So this kind of error when it, they occur, it won't affect the agreement of the trial balance because even though the names are different, it is still a credit balance, so it won't affect the agreement of the trial balance. This type of error is what we refer to as error of commission, right? Where you record the transaction in the correct class of account, but in a wrong account. And we will look at that in a moment. So if this is the error, how then do we now correct the error? We have to now take out the amount in Kwame's account and now put it in Kwame's account. So we're going to open Kwame's account now. And since the amount is on the credit side of Kwame's account, we're going to debit Kwame's account in the name of Kwame to take that 2000 out, right? Then we now credit Kwame's account in the name of Kwame. 2000. So these kind of errors, when they occur, when you are correcting them, you don't need suspense account. Because you realize that suspense account didn't come in. It is an error of commission. But let me give you another scenario which may result into that. So let's say the same idea. Bought goods on credit from Kwame for $2,000. So bought goods on credit for Kwame for $2,000. So let's say that the entry was made in in the personal account only. The, en the entry was made in the personal account only. Now so in this case, you realize that we have bought goods on credit 2000 from Kwame. What should have been the double entry? We debit the purchases account and credit the supplier's account, that is Kwame's account. But in this case, we have recorded the amount only in the personal account, meaning we've recorded it only in Kwame's account. So if we recorded it in only Kwame's account, meaning the purchases account is yet to be debited with this particular purchases from this particular transaction. So as you can see this, this is an error of single entry or incomplete records, right? An er error of single entry or incomplete records because we said that the duality concept states that a transaction has to be recorded in two accounts. A debit entry must have a corresponding credit entry and a credit entry must have a corresponding debit entry. So in a case where the transaction has been recorded only in the personal account, meaning now we need to incorporate, we need to record a transaction in the purchases account. But there is a double entry. So, if we are now going to debit the purchases account, the question we ask ourselves is, what accounts do we credit? So this is where a suspense account comes to town, and we use the suspense account to complete the double entry principle. So in this case, when we are correcting an error like this, we're going to debit the purchases account in the name of suspense to put that figure now in the purchases account. Then we open suspense account and credit it with the goods in the name of purchases. 2000. So this is what you have to understand about correction of errors. That is why I mentioned you need to understand what should have been you need to understand 
what has happened, which is the error, and you need to also be able to know what should be done. Because if you don't know what should have been, you may know what has been done, but you cannot determine what should have been. That is the idea that you need to understand about uh, suspense account or correction of errors and suspense account. So here, your double entry is going to be called on a lot. We're going to be doing a lot of things and when we are working, we're going to be asking ourselves what should have been done, what has been done, what, how do we correct it? What should have been done, what has been done, how do we correct it? And not only that, what will be the impact of that on our profit? So look at this. This single entry that we made was not put in the purchases account. Now we will do final accounts later on. But you saw in the introduction, in the introductory video, whilst I was giving you the pro forma of the financial statement, we mentioned that we bring sales, we bring cost of sales. Cost of sales, we bring purchases, we add uh, uh, carriage of purchases. We, less, we add that to the opening stock, we get goods available for sale, we less the closing stock and then we get the cost of sales, we subtract that from the sales and we get a gross profit. So if a purchase is a figure, something that was bought is not included, meaning that the cost of sales has been reduced. If the cost of sales has been reduced, meaning our gross profit has been increased. So in the correction of the adjusted profit, what do we do? We have to subtract that from the profit because we have reduced our cost of sales and so our profit figure has increased. So this is what you need to understand about the issue on correction of errors, fundamentals, right? So now that we have had some foundations right, now that we've known uh, a couple of things that we need to do about correction of errors, let's now dig deeper into the various types of errors that we can know about or we have to know about and how those errors will be corrected and then from there we will look at two questions in relation to correction of errors and then we will be out of correction of errors right okay so let's look at the first one so types of errors so error of omission error of omission now, I guess this is direct. When we say something is omitted, meaning it wasn't included. When we say something is omitted, meaning it wasn't what? Recorded. So, error of omission is simply failing to record a transaction in the books of what? A company. Now, error of omission does not affect the agreement of the travelers. And when we are correcting errors of omission, it does not include the suspense account. What does that mean? It is like the transaction I put here, bought goods on credit from Kwame, $2,000. If we don't record that at all, then that becomes an error of omission. So if we, not, we are now correcting that error, we just incorporate it in the books of accounts of the company. And so that is what we mean by error of omission. So this is where we fail to record the transactions in the books of accounts of the company. Now, does error of omission have an effect on our profit or loss for the year? Yes, it may, that it may be depending on the transaction in question. If it is a purchases item, then it will have an effect on our profit. If it is an expenses that we have omitted, it will have an effect. If it is an income that we have omitted, it will have what? An effect. So that is what you need to understand. Error of omission is where you don't record the transactions in the books of account. When correcting them, you do not include a suspense account because since it is an, an omission, you will record the transactions in the books as they are supposed to be recorded. Number two is error of principle. Error of principle. This is one of my favorite uh, types of errors. Error of principle. Now, what is error of principle? Error of principle is simply uh, where a transaction or an accounting policy is violated, an accounting policy or principle is violated when recording transactions. So, 
we breach an accounting rule, we breach an accounting policy when recording transactions. That is what we mean by the error of what? Principle. Now, what does that mean? For instance, if there is a transaction like sold assets for cash, $2,000. Sold assets for cash, $2,000. Then the accountant, because, of he, because he's inexperienced and does not know double entry, records this transaction in the sales account. So this disposal of assets is supposed to be entered into the asset disposal account. But if the accountant records it in the sales account because he has heard the word sold, meaning that is what? Error of principle. Again, this error does not affect the agreement of the trial balance because whether we are in the sales account or the asset disposal account, this particular item will be entered on the credit side. So it doesn't affect the agreement of the trial balance. Third, is error of transposition. Error of transposition. Now, what is error of transposition? As the name suggests, this is where a wrong figure is entered in the books of accounts. It looks like the error of casting is the same thing. Like, for instance, if you're supposed to write 2953 and you record 9523, it is called error of what? Transposition. So this is where two of all figures are transposed whilst recording what? Transactions. Now, when there is error of transposition, this one also is not going to affect the agreement of the trial balance. Why? Because the, the figure was recorded at source and the two accounts involved are recorded like that. Or it depends. If it is a single entry, then that could affect the agreement of the uh, trial balance. So error of single entry is where we enter the transaction in a single account, like sold goods for cash. Sold asset for cash, $200, then we enter the transaction only in the cash book and not uh, leaving the disposal asset disposal account. Now, single entry error, when we are correcting them, suspense account is going to come to town and we're going to be using that. Next one is error of commission. That was what I mentioned. I gave an example of. Now, this is where a transaction is recorded in the correct class of accounts but in the wrong account in the correct class of accounts but in the wrong account that is called error of commission so you are it is it is about a supplier but the supplier is kwame but you have recorded it in kwame's account so it is kwame's account but you put it into kwame's account they are all uh, your suppliers so they are in the same class of accounts but you recorded it in the wrong account that is called error of commission then the next one is error of Compensating. Now, error of compensating is where uh, coincidentally equal and opposite errors occurred in or occurs in accounts. So you make an error in one account, then you compensate it with another error in another account. Now, so when it comes to correction of errors, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be using the suspense accounts if we have to bring in suspense. And then we're also going to be doing what we call the general entries. So the general entries like this, this is the pro forma. We're going to have details here. We're going to have debit here. And we're going to have credit here. So for instance, sold goods, sorry, sold assets for cash, $200. Then he has entered it in the sales account. Then we need to correct this error, okay? Because this is an error of principle. So how do we correct it? We correct it by debiting the sales account and then not crediting the asset disposal account. So that is what we enter here. That we debit sales and put the 200 here and then we credit asset disposal and put the 200 here. Right? Then we will write a narration down that error of principle now corrected. Bam, that's it. So we're going to be exploring this later on as we move on in our journey. So these are what you have to understand about correction of errors and suspense accounts. In the next video, we will consider or solve two questions in various areas on correction of errors 
and suspense accounts. So I'll see you in the next video as we talk about some other aspects of the syllabus.